today our main speak, speaker will be mr peter prasad is an engineer has around 35 years experience working in the power transmission sector his core competency is production he has specialized as a full fledged production engineer capable of testing commissioning and carrying out relay setting calculations and application for the myriad of production relays in the power transmission sector he is currently working in abu dhabi transmission and dispatch company as power asset performance specialist i welcome mr peter prasad to this session i hope mr peter prasad is ready to proceed with his presentation are you ready sir yeah i am ready can you hear me I welcome yeah. you. Thank yeah. you yeah. so much. Yeah. Uh, I I presume you can all see my screen. So yeah, without, sure. Uh, without further ado, I'll start with the presentation. It's about protection of power transformers. Um, because of the wide spectrum of audience, uh, you know, um, in such a webinar, uh, I think we have some very senior uh, protection engineers here, plus some beginners also. So I'll treat the middle path. This presentation. will be uh, you know uh, not uh, extremely specialized but uh, it will cover the basics of uh, protection of power transformers and it will have some uh, uh, you know some fine points you know even for the advanced protection engineers okay uh, uh, this is a very basic stuff you know the which talks about the you know the requirements of protection which can be summed into uh, two criteria speed and discrimination basically we want to uh, i think there is some noise in the background you can note it yeah. uh, basically you know we want any fault which is a you know uncontrolled discharge of high energy to be uh, you know cut off as fast as possible so speed is a very important criteria from a safety and equipment point of view at the same time we want to uh, very selectively isolate the fault section and you know uh, so that's where uh, discrimination also comes in we don't want for a small i mean for a fault on a particular section the entire network to go off the grid you know so there is this is the uh, balanced tightrope that we are uh, walking uh, uh, between speed and discrimination as far as uh, unit protection is concerned uh, we'll talk about that later uh, uh, you know speed is the only criteria because uh, discrimination is inbuilt but in when when it comes to backup protection uh, discrimination is very important okay uh, the types of faults i mean will be uh, the outlines will be the types of faults some uh, simplified protection logic diagram basic principles of transformer differential protection uh, transformer overflux protection restricted earth fault protection and then the, uh, the transformer over current and earth fault backup protection then we'll talk a little bit of uh, transformer overloading capabilities and uh, uh, a little bit on auto transformer principle so within this the differential protection and the restricted earth fault protection and the overflux protection or uh, basically you know transformer differential and restricted earth fault protection or unit protection they only protect the protection zone and there is no need to worry about this uh, discrimination overflux protection is for the uh, you know overfluxing to prevent overfluxing of the transformer as far as over current and uh, the earth fault protections are concerned they are the backup protection and that's where uh, discrimination comes in this is also basic sub the types of faults are uh, classified as three phase faults phase to phase faults phase to earth faults and phase to phase faults in, including earth faults three phase faults including earth is basically considered as three phase faults uh we the three phase fault is important from the point of view of the transformer because this is the worst case and the most onerous condition uh, that a transformer can face you know we are talking about external short circuits as far as a transformer is concerned a three phase short circuit on the hv or lv bushings is the worst case scenario you know all other faults are not as severe so when you when you are talking about uh, short circuit withstand capacity of the transformer we are talking about a three phase uh, short circuit on the bushing as the most uh, onerous condition and if the transformer can withstand that uh, you know all other downstream faults 
which includes greater impedance, earth falls, uh, the transformer should be able to withstand. Okay, I mean, the various types of faults that can happen in a transformers, short circuit of windings, poor faults, bushing faults or flashovers, cooler failure, poor fluxing, and uh, faults on the tap changes. Uh, of course, uh, as you all know, there are transformer mechanical devices of protection. We will not be delving uh, into that in this presentation. We will be only focusing on the electrical devices of protection. This is a simplified uh, transformer protection logic diagram. Uh, this is uh, typically taken from a transco network. So the arrangement of CTs, uh, what is key to understanding here is, you know, the CTs, uh, as far as the unit protections are concerned, uh, the CTs, did, uh, the, uh, uh, the location of the CTs determine the zones of protection. For example, if you are talking about a transformer differential and uh, differential protection, as you can see, the CT, is at the top and then the LV side CT is you know on the LV side of the close to the circuit breaker. So uh, whatever fault happens within this uh, zone is protected by the uh, uh, differential protection. So it's not only includes the transformers, it also includes whatever is in between like switch gear or cables uh, which are before, I mean, after this uh, CT and before the LV CT. This is important to understand the zone of protection is defined by the location of the CTs. Uh, the restricted earth fault protection is restricted to, uh, uh, is normally used only when the there is a star winding which is earthed. So basically it, is, it, is, it doesn't cover face-to-face uh, -face, uh, faults, it's only for uh, earth faults. But uh, the reason we use it is it is uh, as far as earth faults are concerned, it is uh, more sensitive than the differential protection. The differential protection will cover both the face-to-face -face faults and face-to-earth faults, while the RF protection will only uh, cover the earth faults, but um, they, are, they can be said more sensitive to, than the differential protection. We'll come to this uh, later when we deal with RF protection. Um, Okay, as far as the HV REF zone is concerned, as you can see, it is only restricted to the HV winding. Uh, one CT is from the neutral, and of course, we have three CTs summated from the uh, face side. Similarly, for the LV REF, uh, it is uh, the CT from the neutral of the LV side plus the three face CTs, which are summated, you know. Of course, the overcurrent and uh, uh, the LV overcurrent, HV overcurrent, other air fault relays have, uh, you know, don't have, uh, they don't submit any CTs. So, uh, uh, except for the earth fault, earth fault, you can have the standby earth fault is having a CT directly from the neutral. So, that is the LV standby earth fault. The summation of the three phase CTs also, phase CTs also gives us the earth fault current. And so, between these uh, LV earth fault and the LV standby earth fault, it is the same current. Except the fact that's a direct measurement from the neutral CT. This is the summated value of the three phase CTs. So, uh, you know, if you want to make a hair splitting difference, uh, three CT errors uh, are in the picture, whereas for LV stand by default, it's just one CT, but it's basically the same current. Okay, coming to the transformer differential protection scheme. Uh, this is for a uh, star star delta transformer where the delta is used as a stabilizing winding. Although the delta is not loaded, if the delta is uh, loaded, we can use, uh, you know, um, use it as a three winding transformer. Here it's just a two winding uh, transformer differential protection. Delta is just earthed on one side. If any other point on the delta gets earthed, it will still uh, operate the differential. The differential relay will cover that. So transformer differential protection is based on current summation of all the windings, depends on whether you have a two winding or three winding uh, transformer. Uh, in this particular case, although this is three winding, because one, uh, the delta is not loaded, uh, it is enough to have a two winding uh, differential uh, protection. What needs to be taken into consideration when you are uh, setting a differential protection is, you know, uh, turns ratio, 
CT ratio and phase shift of the windings. Then the modern numerical relays, uh, these are automatically taken care of if you provide the right settings. Uh, but in the olden days, this phase shift of the windings, for example, a delta star was uh, uh, counted by making the star side delta and the delta side star to counter for the 30 degree phase shift uh, with the use of interposing CTs to uh, compensate for the turns ratio. Uh, okay, one of the challenges of differential protection is when you switch on from the HV side, there will be a huge inrush, which will be seen by the relay as a differential current. And there are many techniques, I think, uh, used in the past uh, uh, to counter this phenomena, including uh, providing a time delay. But of course, the modern uh, method is to uh, use a second harmonic restraint feature. Since the uh, transformer inrush has got a significant uh, uh, second harmonic component, that is used, you know, the second harmonic uh, uh, component is uh, uh, filtered and compared with the fundamental. And there's a setting of 10% or 15%, which is used to uh, um, block the relay. Of course, we also wanted to operate, if we switch on to a fault, we wanted to operate. So uh, there are other algorithms for it. Uh, uh, what we need to bear in mind is, uh, the concept of cross blocking used by the relay manufacturers. So, uh, in rush, if you if our in rush setting is uh, let us say ten percent, when you switch on, uh, it might be about ten percent for one phase, but not necessarily for the other phases. Or it can be about ten percent for all the three phases, but can decay quickly for uh, one or two phases. So, as long as there is um, uh, in rush, I mean uh, more than 10% in rush in any one of the phases, there will be a cross blocking feature uh, available. Sometimes it's available as a setting where you can set this or but you can also in some release it is inbuilt. Uh, but when a fault up appears and there's a big jump in fundamental, there are ways of you know the relay uh, sensing that and operating for a fault. The main uh, difference between a restricted earth fault relay and a high impedance, uh, sorry, high impedance restricted earth fault protection and uh, the differential relay is the stability principle between a low impedance and high impedance. Uh, a stability principle as far as the differential is a low impedance relay. So basically stability principle is through bias where the differential current will be the vector summation of the, all the currents. Whereas the restraining current uh, against which it is compared will be uh, the scalar sum of all the currents. Okay, as far as the differential relay is concerned, the pickup setting needs to take into consideration CT errors and the tap changer range. You know, you can set it for only one particular uh, tap. Then, if the tap changer has got a plus or minus ten percent range, and if the tap is uh, the transformer is expected to operate across this full range, then obviously this plus and plus ten and minus ten percent uh, uh, has to be introduced into the basic pickup setting so that there is no it doesn't uh, there is no false operation. Okay, this is just the bias principle. As you can see, you have the uh, uh, vector sum on the y-axis and the scalar sum on the uh, x-axis. And you can have different slopes. You know, Basically, as the through-fault current increases, uh, the uh, idea of uh, having different slopes is as the through-fault current increases, we tend to increase the slope setting. So there is a greater bias. Uh, the challenges of uh, protection is uh, to do, do with the concept of CT saturation, you know. Uh, when a CT gets saturated, uh, basically its output is reduced. As you can see, you have a full sine waveform and then you have, uh, you know, if it's saturated, the red, red represents a saturated CT waveform. Uh, I mean, uh, to have a totally unsaturated CT might be a, a design constraint because there is a constraint of space as far as uh, switch gear is concerned. So although all the CT calculations are done to uh, have a CT that can deliver full output, it is practically, in the practical world, it's not 100% possible. So uh, we can expect uh, CT, uh, some sort of CT saturation, but as long as the protection operates correctly and is stable for the extreme through fault conditions, the CT is uh, supposed to fulfill its requirement. Uh, uh, two ways that the CT can uh, get saturated, one is through heavy currents and the other is through the DC component in the current.
get uh, some points on uh, transformer differential testing you know normally protection engineers test the differential pickup and dropout then they operating times for different values of pickup then they test the bias characteristics they test the second harmonic restraint features the fifth harmonic restraint feature is basically the fifth harmonic the overflux condition is uh, uh, is uh, characterized by uh, high fifth harmonic content, content we don't want the differential relay to operate for it because the over that is separate overflux protection to cover the overflux so the fifth harmonic restraint feature just ensures that the you know the fifth harmonic current doesn't uh, cause the differential relay to operate overflux protection principle is just you know voltage by it's the relay sensors voltage by frequency and uh, based on uh, the settings it's uh, it can either give an alarm or issue a trip signal uh, it depends on you know the philosophy protection philosophy of utilities whether they use it for alarm or trip or disable the overflux protection as you can see uh, this is this has to be coordinated with the actual transformer uh, uh, overflux curve so this is just an example you know the red is the <clears throat> permissible short time over excitation of the transformer and you know it can have a definite time setting or you can have follow this curve and with some margins this is also a sample of overflexing setting curves you know uh, the red one is the transformer uh, 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 red one is the transformer curve and then you have the uh, the green one, which is uh, a trip, and the blue one, which is the alarm. So, so uh, now we come to the restricted earth fault protection. So as we said, because it is linked to a particular earth star winding, it can be, you, you need to have a, if you have two star windings that, that are earth, you need to have a separate uh, restricted earth fault protection for each one. Uh, it is basically a summation of the CTs. It can follow the high impedance principle or the low impedance principle. So the low impedance principle, <coughs> uh, the stabili stability is uh, based on the bias principle as we which we saw for the differential. Uh, there is no difference. But the high impedance uh, earth fault protection, the stability principle is different. In basically, the difference between uh, uh, low impedance and high impedance is in the main difference is in the stabilizing principle. So uh, some of the key points is it's okay. It's like all differentials ba balanced on based on current summation uh, because the summation is done upfront and not in the relay, you know, through the hardware, the relay itself can be a very simple type of relay, even high impedance bus bar protection. Uh, uh, it's a simple, I mean, a simple relays can, uh, you know, serve the function as far as relays are concerned, but the demand will, uh, on the CTs or more. So, you know, what you save on the relay, you might have to spend on the CTs. It, as I explained, it covers only one winding. It is immune to inrush because of that. So, uh, the considerations for uh, what we had for the differential for the second harmonic restraint is not required there. So, basically, you need not worry when you switch on the transformer that the HVREF will, uh, you know, can uh, operate because it, it is only looking at one winding and the currents are supposed to be summated. As I said before, it operates only for earth faults, but uh, because it is also immune to the tap changer variations, it can be set uh, much more sensitive uh, than the earth fault. For example, for than the differential protection. If the differential protection normally is set to 30 to 35 percent of the transformer rated current, the, uh, the restricted earth fault uh, can be set to 10% of the transformer rated current or even less. Okay, I think uh, it is worthwhile to deal a little bit on the uh, stability principle of the high impedance protection. Uh, it basically uses the, the basic philosophy is, you know, it, it takes the worst case scenario. What is the worst, worst case scenario? When you're summating two CTs, one CT gets fully saturated, and the other CT is uh, not at all saturated. Then you will have the maximum uh, differential current. If your uh, relay setting can, the, the, if the relay can uh, be designed to not operate for this condition, uh, is uh, designed to be stable for this condition, then we are covering the less worst case scenarios. 
So uh, this is a just a high impedance differential stability principle explained. Uh, as you can see, we have I mean it because the high impedance comes from the stabilizing resistor that we use, uh, which uh, you know is connected in series to a standard uh, over current relay or earth fault relay, and this uh, will have a high impedance in the terms of around 700, 2500, or 2000 ohms. Normally, the, it's a variable resistor is provided. And this resistor is uh, through this resistor only we step uh, we select the we set the stabilizing voltage, and the stabilizing voltage is set in such a way, as I said before, it it uh, takes care of the condition where one CT is fully saturated and the other CT is not saturated. And once you set the stabilizing voltage beyond that, with a safety margin, then you are pretty sure this relay will be stable for uh, any high through fault currents. So. Uh, this is a typical uh, two CTs with the relay and stabilizing resistance between RCTA is the CT resistance uh, and the loop resistance. Um, RF uh, uh, people, uh, protection engineers involved in uh, RF uh, relay settings will know that this data of the loop resistance and the CT winding resistance will be required by the protection setting engineers, and this is the reason for that. So, what happens? So when I am here assuming CTB to be fully saturated, in which case it is basically the, this is the equivalent of the exciting magnetizing shunt, shunt impedance becoming zero. It's like basically a short circuit across this uh, CT. So then the voltage across the relay will be uh, R loop B and RCTB into the maximum through fault current. You know, it can be RCTA or R, R loop A or R loop B or RCTB, whichever is higher. So voltage developed across the relay under worst case scenarios, maximum through fault current to RCTB or R loop B or RCTA or R loop B, whichever is higher. But uh, as long as this relay remains stable for this condition, if the voltage setting is uh, stable for this condition, set higher than this value, then we are safe. Okay, this is just an outline of the high impedance stability principle, the summary. Uh, it is based on the logic that you would take care of the stability of the worst case scenario, then you are covered for all circumstances. And the worst case scenario, as I explained, is the two cities are in parallel, balancing current of each other. One remains uh, fully, totally unsaturated, the other is fully saturated during a through fault. This is uh, the transformer LV RF scheme uh, applied on the LV winding. We have three phase CTs and the neutral CTs, they are all summated together. Uh, for the high impedance, uh, another important point to remember is all the CTs should be, because we are doing the summation outside, all the CTs have to be uh, the same CT ratio. You know? And because of the stringent requirements, preferably classics. Although there are cases where we have, uh, we can use uh, 5P20 CTs also, uh, as long as you are careful about the setting voltage. But class X is the one with 0.25% error, so we can maximum sensitivity in setting can be achieved with class X. But it is very important that uh, the CTs are uh, uh, having the same CT ratio. This is not required for the low impedance schemes where, uh, you know, within the relay, the different CT ratios can be adjusted. Okay, this is just a demonstration of, uh, you know, the stability of the HVRF. Um, I mean, this is a, uh, this is to say, this is an external fault. I mean, I have just uh, plotted the CT ratio, just a you know, sample case study, CT ratios, and see how the current plays out for external fault. Uh, because we are talking about a single phase to earth fault, uh, you know, this is just CT conversion, just using Kirchhoff's current law, you can, uh, you know, find out that this picture demonstrates for an external fault on the LV side, the current through the relay is basically zero, how it is stable. This is important. I mean, if you get your polarities wrong or, you know, then this can create a problem. But uh, once you ensure everything is uh, correct, this should be the actual scenario for a through phase fault. HVRF, this is uh, for a fault on the HV side. 
again this uh, is a, you know just to show how it plays out how the currents get uh, you know circulate uh, within the protection and how the release is just uh, zero current okay this is for actual in phase fault here the scenario changes uh, it's a fault on the hv side and as you can see the relay will see a current This exercise can be done by anybody, you know, just using Kirchhoff's law and basic understanding of uh, the circuitry. This can be plotted out. Okay, this is to, for, uh, for the LVREF protection. Uh, external fault, how the relay is stable. And a demonstration for uh, in zone fault, how the relay is the current. Uh, this is an important uh, drawing because, um, uh, as you can see on the left side, uh, you can see that the the additional sensitivity of offered by restricted earth fault protection. You know, for earth fault, uh, you can see almost for a solidly earth system, the RF, you know, uh, based on your setting of uh, whether it's five percent, ten percent, or fifteen percent, how much the differential covers and how much the RF covers. The RF can cover a larger percentage of winding earth faults. And this, uh, the right side picture shows us that, you know, as, as we move towards the neutral, if the earth on the neutral of the winding, actually there is a large current, you know, this picture demonstrates that. I mean, it, uh, percentage of winding from neutral at which earth fault occurs, it goes up, then there is a slowly drop down. And then as you approach towards the neutral, then the, fall current goes up. And this is important to remember <laughs> because the tap changer normally for a star winding is uh, located on the neutral side, you know. So uh, uh, the RF can, you know, pick that up, you know. Okay, this is the basically uh, the protection, other protections. Uh, this is for a typical star star delta transformer which you use in transfer network. As you can see, the HV standby earth fault, it, it's just, uh, you know, the relay is fed from a neutral CT on the HV side. Um, <clears throat> because, uh, you know, in this, because of the influence of the delta, there is not a, you know, turns ratio correspondence between the earth fault current on the LV side and HV side. So basically, the HV standby earth fault is uh, backup protection for the transformer uh, winding earth fault. And uh, it is set in such a way that it doesn't see fault on the LV side, nor respond to your fault on the earth fault on the HV side. The LV standby earth fault uh, is uh, connected from a CT directly to the relay, LV side neutral CT. And this will grade with the uh, LV earth fault protection. Uh, as I said before, the differential will cover a fault on the tertiary, but uh, we can also have, you know, because it's uh, the de tertiary delta is uh, earthed, it's not kept floating earth, uh, we can have introduced a CT there and have earth fault protection there. It's kind of unit protection only. Okay. Uh, now we are coming to the principles of uh, backup protection grading. Uh, so backup protection is basically, you know, when the protection that is supposed to operate first doesn't operate, doesn't mean we keep the fault, uh, you know, uh, being continuously fed. We need to the backup protections to operate and uh, trip downstream or upstream uh, to clear the fault by all means. The but when when are talking about backup protection, of course, as I said in the, in the beginning, uh, there is of course we are compromising on speed uh, to ensure discrimination, but. We also need to bear in mind, I mean, backup protection is kind of, in, you know, there is a backup protection for a main protection and then there's a backup of a backup. At the end of the day, we need to ensure that the fault is uh, cleared as far as a transformer is concerned before the maximum through fault will stand, uh, you know, time of the transformer because uh, otherwise we, there is the risk of the transformer failing. So normally a transfer maximum uh, through fault will stand uh, 
is uh, two seconds, which means you know a, a short circuit that is uh, bushings it can withstand up to two seconds. This is a, um, a theoretical value, but we ensure that before this two second, uh, the backup protection is clear the fault, any through fault. So uh, HV over current uh, will grade with the LV over current. This is a straightforward issue because as far as over current is concerned, the phase currents are concerned, there is a direct turns ratio correspondence. But uh, because the earth fault, we cannot grade the earth fault LV with the HV SBF because there is no turns ratio correspondence uh, because of the role played by the delta. Hence, uh, the LV earth fault always uh, has to grade with the LV standby earth fault. Although both see the same current, as I said before, the only difference is the LV standby earth fault also trips the HV side, uh, whereas the LV earth fault trips the LV breaker only. So, okay, grading is, uh, uh, this is pretty basic stuff. Grading is based on, uh, could be either through definite time or, uh, uh, you know, uh, curves, inverse curves or other different types of inverse curves. And uh, uh, IEC standard inverse curves is the normally what we follow, but, uh, you know, depending on specific situations, different curves can be adopted. This is again, uh, you know, just to ensure, you know, how, I mean, I'm talking about a, just a, two transformers in parallel, feeding a distribution uh, network. So as you can see, if a fault on a feeder, normally the feeder protection is supposed to operate. Unit, if the feeder has unit protection, it will be cleared instantaneously. If there is no unit protection and the, I mean, if the unit protection fails and there is a backup protection, let us assume it is uh, cleared in 700 milliseconds. But if the feeder fails to operate, then we expect the bus section uh, to open first to prevent, you know, the transformer on the uh, right side not to feed the fault, you know, because this is on this side of the section. But we also need the transformer to open because that's through through the transformer only the fault current is being fed. So this is the grading. Normally for numerical relays, 250 millisecond grading margin is adopted. These days, even 200 millisecond seems to be okay. Whereas if you have static relays, 300 or 400 milliseconds uh, grading margin is required. So, okay, then as you see, if uh, feeder protection fails, then you need to open the bus section and the LV incomer. And if that fails to operate, then uh, the next step is the HV breaker, another 300 millisecond margin. And if that breaker fails, then the circuit breaker fail operation will, you know, clear this. So we ensure that it's all within two seconds at the end of the day, because backup protection is basically to prevent equipment damage. You know. So, okay, this is a, uh, you know, max, I mean, this is a typical uh, old transformer that has failed after feeding many short circuits in its life. It gave up its go. So this is the electromechanical forces as this is what can, uh, it can end up as, you know, but this is a very extreme scenario. Okay, uh, briefly, I'll touch on uh, uh, transformer overloading capabilities because uh, this is related to the over current settings of the transformers, which a uh, protection engineer keeps, keeps need to keep in their mind. Uh, you know, um, I mean, uh, gone are the days when transformers were, uh, you know, loaded less. These days, they are used to their full capacity. And, you know, if there are delays in network development uh, plans, you know, transformers tend to get to overloaded. Uh, so uh, it needs we need to keep in mind that you know IEC standards uh, in this particular case 676.7 allows for short term emergency and long term long term emergency overloading on power transformers. So long term emergency is anything about 30 short term is 30 minutes you know, and uh, long term is anything can be two hours or four hours or six hours uh, or even longer than that. So uh, medium capacity power transformers, that is up to 100 MVA. Uh, Long-term emergency load as per IEC can be, as per the relevant standards, can go up to 1.5 per unit. And short-term emergency loading can go up to 1.8. Doesn't mean, uh, you know, we take a decision to load it that level, but we just keep need to keep that in mind. So long-term emergency loading for large capacity transformers, that are transformers above 100 MVA, uh, it is uh, can go up to 1.3 per unit and uh, short term up to 1.5 uh, per unit. 
so uh, whatever uh, you know based on the uh, the asset uh, department decides to fix as the overloading capabilities of the transformer because this uh, this information goes to the ldc also how much they can wo- overload this transformer under under contingency scenarios and for how long so based on that uh, the transformer hv mv and lv lv provided is also loaded uh, needs to be set you know with the uh, 20% margin uh, preferably or at least 10% margin uh, having said that uh, we are not talking about mechanical de- devices of protection here but if there is any long term emergency loading uh, we need to know uh, which hotspot criteria has been used to calculate that it could be 130 if people are conservative or 140 or even 150 so based on that you also need to review your oil and winding temperature alarm and trip settings because uh, if it is uh, 130 then maybe the 125 setting of the winding temperature trip needs to be increased you know so this this is for the long term short term half an hour this should not be a concern because the oil time constant is uh, greater than that what we need to bear in mind is over current settings are not uh, overload settings you know meant for protection against faults and ideally not meant for thermal overload protection for thermal overload only we have this thermal replica and this oil and winding temperature gauges which should do the job better than the using the over current as a overload setting what we want is the over current protection not to trip during a overload condition because that will be you know exacerbating the situation when the network needs uh, you know is uh, you know under contingency we don't want any unnecessary trip finally close with a bit on the principle of auto transformer uh, uh, you know we know auto transformers are uh, used uh, you know f- to save some money on copper basically so uh, the the principle is uh, as you can see is illustrated here if you see if i have a two winding okay i am just assuming 100 by you know 50 volt so one amps it is 2 amps here but if you see auto transformer when you tap it here as you can see the winding is can be designed for 1 amps no need for half of the winding to be you know designed for 2 amps so this is simple principle to illustrate you know how we are saving uh, money on copper when you uh, you know when we go for auto transformer but this uh, savings in copper is only uh, theoretically valid up to the ratio 1 is to 3 so if you are talking about a 400 bar uh, 220 kv transformer you can go for auto auto uh, you can go for an auto, as an auto transformer even for a 400 bar 132 it can be an auto transformer but beyond that uh, the the you don't save much money and the disadvantages are then uh, greater uh, the main disadvantage of auto transformer is that the primary and secondary windings are not galvanically separated and also uh, the tap changer is not on the neutral side you know it's after the after the common winding so you need a maybe instead of a m type you an r type r type of tap changer which is a little more complex uh, that is basically to talk about the principle of auto transformer uh, uh, thank you very much for your time i hope it was of some use uh, Thanks once again and hope to meet you all again sometime. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you Mr. Peter. And hope we'll see you again uh, and we'll send you all the details through your emails for this uh, webinar and for the coming webinar as well. Thank you. Thank you.